out there in video land. It's Julian Chambers again, here to talk about the 100. I know if you remember my first post, you probably thought to yourself, wait a minute, 100 black characters? Yeah, I know, right? So, yeah, there are a lot of black comic book characters in this book uh, project I'm working on, The 100 Greatest African-American comic book characters gives me a chance to sort of assess that list of characters. It, that reaction of like, wow, 100 isn't really that shocking. Uh, most people can get to like eh, 10, 20. Uh, then after that, it gets a little hinky. Uh, of course, when we talk about comic book characters, where I'm making some distinctions. And today I'm going to talk a little bit about that idea of like creating a corpus. So here, there is a judgment call. As I talked about before, when we say greatest, there's a lot going on there. And part of the reason that I you know, hesitate to just say the greatest is the, the marker, because great really means different things to different people. Clearly, as a person who thinks about the history of comics, a lot of, a lot of my thinking about it is informed by historical merit. That is the first time something happened is really important. But when we start talking about black comic book characters, uh, there's some periods of production that are quite prominent, right? If you've seen the great uh, documentary White Scripts and Black Superman, uh, that documentary talks about the emergence of black comic book characters, in particular superhero comic book characters, starting in the 1960s and going through the 1970s. And so a lot of the characters that you know, a lot of the characters that are household names in contemporary American culture, are from that period. So Black Panther, as I talked about before, starts in 1966. And then other characters that have sort of made their way into the mainstream, sort of like public ethos, were reiterated within a decade after that, right? So the Falcon is the first African-American character. Uh, but then you have characters like Black Lightning, who comes in the late 70s, 1977, or a character like Misty Knight, who's really a sort of an analog to black exploitation, or of course a character like Luke Cage, who recently had his uh, adaptation in the Netflix, Marvel Netflix series, Luke Cage. All those are 1970s characters, right? Late 60s, 1970s characters. But when you look at um, more contemporary characters, uh, there are characters being created that are not associated with like Marvel or DC. They're also a part of that canon. And I'll talk more about these sort of independent characters who are making their way onto the list. Like, So one of the things about the greatest here that I'm making some decisions about the characters that are going to be on this list. And so I'm omitting things that may be on a list of like historically driven definitions of greatness. Uh, so I'm not doing a lot of newspaper comic strips, right? I'm not doing Bootsy, for instance, because it's not a comic book, right? But I am doing uh, earlier characters that you might not have heard of. Uh, and so there's an effort here try to map out a sort of black comic imaginary in a way that takes into account both the historical transformation of the genre, but also more contemporary sort of innovation, especially with the emergence of the independent comic movement in the, in the late 1980s and going to the 1990s with really notable creative efforts during that time period. But there are things that I'm just going to not touch on. And a prime example of this would be something like uh, Gunhawks, right? So uh, that's an example of a character... Um, that I'm not going to do, even though I thought long and hard about it. Gunhouse, in case you don't know, is a, is a comic book that came out in the early 1970s. It's actually a, a sort of Western comic, a return to that genre for Marvel Comics, uh, Reno Jones and Kid Cassidy, the Gunhawks. And the reason I'm not going to do it, because like, by no shape or way, shape, or form would I think of it as the greatest, but it's really interesting because of what I think it does represent, which is a kind of conservatism uh, reaction that sort of playing itself out in comics because you have a black character here, uh, the aforementioned Reno Jones, and his white partner, Kit Cassidy, who are on a journey that's really sort of framed by a kind of lost cause Southern mythology that's really interesting. Interesting for me as someone who's thought about Southern culture and, and Southern memory a great deal, but also interesting in the sense that I see it as part of a broader narrative of sort of like cultural renaissance that's a sat attached to Southernness in the 1970s that people have written about uh, with great a, a great deal of detail. So this is this is one of those little permutations of that kind of thing happening in comic books. And when you look at 
an image like this, when you're looking at something like this, so it's associated with uh, gun hogs, you can recognize how that sort of tapping into like this kind of mythology around the lost cause that Southerners have sort of mainstreamed in the 1970s. So a fascinating sort of historical comic narrative, but not necessarily something that should be on the list of 100 graded characters. So as always, when you think about these things, um, recognize that, yeah, I'm thinking about it as an academic and someone who likes comics too, but there's a lot going on in this project. So uh, thanks for watching and more to come.